morning. Good to see you and be with you today. The first PowerPoint slide is a summary of what I want to share with you today. It talks about relationship church is a delta force. That's what we've had on our banner out in the foyer, uh, saying that we're uh, passionate, we're discipled, and we're going to believe Jesus and move forward, right? <clears throat> and <clears throat> in order to do that, we will take a new land as we move forward. We will take the promised land, fulfill the inheritance that our Father has given us, and it will be done through the fear of the Lord, which will bring the kingdom of God into us, around us, and through us by his all. I've meditated on that <clears throat> for a year, longer than that. I have a new um, expanded paraphrase in everyday English that I've enjoyed <clears throat> reading because it kind of puts a uh, perspective on God's Word that I hadn't thought about before in a way that I hadn't thought about. And I love to read various translations because that shows me various insights that the body of Christ has to give. It's done by Timothy Jen uh, Jennings, an MD. And this caught my attention not long ago. From Revelation 8.1, <clears throat> Jesus the Lamb opened the seventh section of God's book of foreknowledge and there was stunned silence in heaven for a half an hour as the intelligent beings were overwhelmed with awe. When they realized how God resolved the war started by Satan, Think about that. The divine council, which is God's administrative beings in heaven, when they realized how their God and our God had overcome Satan, they were in such awe. There was silence for 30 minutes. I want to develop that in my life as a way of life. To walk in awe of my God and know that he's God and I'm not and that he pulls off things that I couldn't even think of. Think, think, think about everything that has been disappointing to you, has hurt you, that you haven't understood, but you didn't do it perfectly, but you were working with him as best you knew how. <clears throat> and even at times when you were rebellious and he said, when you come back to me, I'll work it together for good. And while he was here on earth, his disciples didn't even get it, how God was establishing his kingdom. And it tells us in Corinthians that Jesus did that on purpose. Because if Satan had really known that killing him on the cross was the key to us walking victoriously with him as a way of life. They would have never crucified him. Yes, our God is resolving the war that was started by Satan when he, one of the most beautiful creatures that has ever been created, 
part of his divine counsel to worship him when he decided he wanted to be God. He wanted to be lifted up. He wanted his way, not God's way. And it infected all of us. It infected every one of us to want our way, not his way. Whether we do it by pulling in and being an introvert or whether we do it rebelliously by saying, no, I'll do it my way. And so God is such an awesome God. Discovering who he is as a way of life is what makes the Christian life exciting. Summing up what I hope to point out, that the steps that are shown in this slide is the steps to heaven, the portals, if you please, opening up so that his will comes to earth and and he uses us to bless the divine counsel as they watch us trusting our God when we don't understand why this is happening, why that's happening, but we say, I'll trust you because you're God and I'm not. And your love is so amazing. I want to discover more about it every day. So that means we return to the threshing floor and that sounds bad, doesn't it? Because we're used to interpreting things negative rather than light of the all of God. The all of God, he takes everything when you turn to him and turns it for good. So thrashing is a good thing. And as we submit to the fear of God, that's not being afraid of God. That's being afraid of offending him. So let's see how that works. We turn to him, run into his arms, let him be our savior. And that's exciting, but that's only the first step. That's only the first step in the exciting journey that he has for us. And as we come to him at that time, he begins to work out what got worked into us when we got doused into this world of sin. You know, when we got doused into this world of sin, we took on the characteristics of our enemy called Satan. What are those? Selfishness. How does it affect me? How does it affect the ones I love? And fear of God. He must be out to punish me. No, he's out to bless you. And distrusting his character. His character is love. He invited us and only us to have his DNA. Oh boy, did that make Satan mad. He had the highest character uh, creation in heaven and he wanted more. And as a result, he didn't trust his God and he'll spend eternity in hell. And he said, I am so mad that I didn't get God's DNA like you have and I don't have the opportunity to release his image like you in his family has on earth. And I'm going to tell you as many lies as I can get you to believe. And I'm going to hurt you as much as I can so that I can pull you down. I learned from the time I was saved at nine, I knew there was more than I didn't know. And it took me until I was 30 years old to discover Galatians 2.20 that said, it's not he that lives, it's not I who lives, but it's he that lives in me. 
I thought I was to do the best I could. And I knew it wasn't enough. And then I discovered I can't do it. And he never intended me to. Let me live in you and through you as a way of life. And that changed my life. And it's still changing my life. And so I just want to share a few highlights of what that has meant to me. I realized none of us here are perfect. Not a one of us. Is that bad news? No, it's good news. Because he's got it covered. And we've got black spots in our heart, in our heart as this diagram on the left shows. And we came into this world with a black heart. Give me the bottle or the milk or the nourishment when I want it and change my diaper when I want it and let me do what I want to when I want to. And so we now are in the process of learning to live from the new heart that he gave us. Because when we received him as our Savior, he gave us a new heart. A new heart. And in that new heart, Philippians 2 and 3, read it for yourself says that he placed in your heart at that time everything that he provided for you on the cross. Victory for everything. Every wound, every unkind thing that your mate, your father, your mother, your siblings, next door neighbors, anybody said to you to wound you. God said, guess what? I'm going to turn it for good. And you're going to be in such awe that you're never going to walk out of my presence because you know out of my presence you've stepped off the narrow way and you're going down the ditch. So, therefore, all of our life is in the process of learning to walk in the authority that he has for us, bringing forth what he's deposited in us. Those verses in Philippians says, work out your salvation. Not for it, work it out. That means when you're in a difficult spot, when you don't understand what's going on, God is allowing that so that you will trust him and get stronger and stronger and stronger and have the parts of your heart healed And reflect his image. Isn't that good news? Isn't that exciting to know, to learn with him in that? Now, Joseph is one of the um, best examples that I can think of. Joseph, at a very young age, teenage years, was betrayed by his brothers. Some of them wanted to kill him. Somebody stood up and said, No, let's don't kill him. Let's just sell him and get some money and tell daddy he died and and put some blood on his coat so that we can uh, make our story look good. Can you imagine the betrayal of your siblings that either wanted to kill you or sell you, and they sold you? You went to a country where you didn't know the people, you didn't know the language, and you became a slave. Read it for yourself in Genesis 35 through 50. There we have Pharaoh's um, wife, and she got so mad she put him in prison. But in prison, he continued to trust God. And he put the prison in order. And one of the development of his Christ-like character in a difficult place and was promoted. You know the story if you don't read it. 
It's a beautiful story. And I hang on to the verse and the 20th chapter, uh, 20th verse, 50th chapter that said, when his brother said, now that dad's dead, you're probably going to kill us. He said, no, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Think about, think about every hurtful thing that's ever happened to you, every disappointment that you have. The enemy wants you to turn from God and says, well, if that's the kind of stuff you do, I don't want to serve you. That's the biggest lie that cuts us off from seeing the awe of God. Joseph said it well. Yes, the enemy meant it for evil. He meant it to destroy you. But I mean it for good. Will you trust me and let me show you the awe of God? Let me take you into my promised land for you, which is my inheritance in you and your inheritance in me. Let me make the circle complete, releasing heaven to earth in you as you walk with him. Then you are restored to his image and it flows and it glows and it goes out and changes the world. And then the angels look and say, wow, look at these children of God. They trust him. We don't have a clue what's going on. They didn't believe the lie that God didn't love them. They didn't believe that they chose to trust him when they didn't understand what God was doing. I've held on to a phrase that Sherry Kyler, I believe is I'm pronouncing her name right, said at Northwest Christian Fellowship years ago uh, to embrace the unexplainable, to get the un forgettable. As we will trust him, as Joseph did, we will get the unforgettable, even though we may not understand why things turned out different than we expected. I challenge us today to take the leap of faith. Say, God, I'm going to trust you If I fall, so be it. You're bigger than my fall. You're bigger than I am. You're God and I'm not. You understand what's going on. I don't understand, but I'll trust you. I saw a clip that blessed my heart in actually the last, I guess, maybe it's two weeks, that... Uh, Carlson Tucker did of interviewing um, John Voigt. Voigt, you know, is a movie star, uh, good reputation, conservative, doing good, acclaimed fame, uh, had, I'm sure, as much money as he needed and so forth. And he said, when his life fell apart, the fame, the claim, the celebrity, the whole bit fell apart including his family and his children and he fell on his knees before God and said this is difficult God said I meant it to be what about that but he said with that word he was overwhelmed with the love of God because he knew that God had this and that God was on his side and God was listening to him and he was hearing him and he could take the pain that he felt was going to kill him and cause it to work for together to good. And he said, I came out of that saying, the one thing I fear, and that's the fear of God, the one thing I fear is offending God. Oh, that grips my heart. Because you know, when I started walking with Jesus in uh, at 30 years old, 
I was in love with Jesus Christ, my beloved. And I know the first class I taught, somebody said, why are you always saying Jesus Christ? And I thought, why am I saying that? And I realized, yeah, he's my beloved. But you know, some time ago, and I've been challenged with it all along, somebody that's very close to me, at a time that was one of the biggest crises I've gone through, when that crisis and that trauma happened, I was thinking about me and my dreams that would never be fulfilled. And I was thinking about how my children and my grandchildren were hurt. But this person said the cry of their heart was first, Father, you didn't get what you wanted. You see, when we left Father's heart in heaven, he knew us before the foundation of the world. And we begged to go on earth and become his image bearers. And he said, yes. And he put you in the very place that you are and have been and will be in order to refine that image so that you can fulfill his heart's desire before the foundation of the world down here on earth. We get down here on earth and sometimes people get apathetic. They get complacent. This is too hard. I don't want to do it anymore. And we forget who our God is, the awesomeness of our God. We forget who we were created to be. And we don't give Father the inheritance that he planned to have through us and to give to us because we lose sight. So when I heard this person say, Father, you didn't get what you wanted, I thought, okay, wait a minute. There's a time warp here. There is a time warp. We tend to look at things from our perspective instead of his perspective. And I submit today that we jump across the the place of faith and we agree to go where only he can take us. But where he delights to take us that will give him the inheritance that he has for us, in us, and through us for his glory and for eternity we will be like the divine counsel in awe of how he worked the thing that was so painful to us for his glory. Because you see, our worship team are amazing. And when we worship, we are flooding heaven with the worship that um, Lucifer should have done and took away, when we worship, we fill that spot in heaven. They stop and listen many times. But it's not just through singing. When you walk through the pain, when you walk through the difficulty, that he said would come, John 16, 33 said, that you'll have many trials, many tribulations, many difficulties, but guess what? I have provided victory for you. You do not need to be a victim. You can and are designed to be an overcomer, a victor in me, so that Father will get what he wanted. Then this person said, Jesus, you didn't get the reward of your suffering to the tragedy. You didn't get the reward of your suffering. Your blood was shed, but they didn't receive it. They were not teachable. They didn't repent. You didn't get the reward of your suffering. Your blood was trampled upon. May we never do that. Then this person said, 
Holy Spirit, you were grieved, rejected, ignored, and pained. You see, Holy Spirit is living in you to bring forth Father's plan and Jesus' provision so that you can experience victory now, here and now. So I submit to us today, let's reverse the curse, okay? And let's turn the tragedy and pain into victory. Let's take that leap of faith and let's come to him once again. I discovered this picture and somebody showed it and I thought, yes, I like that picture of Jesus saying, come to me. Yes, there's going to be waves, there's going to be turmoil, but I've got this. Can you trust me? Because I've got it. Be careful not to offend me by not trusting me, but not believing that I love you more than my own life. I laid my life down. That's how much I love you. Trust me that I will turn this pain for good. And as we do that, we take that leap of faith and our character is made like his. Nobody can lay hands on you and release character. It's done by one act of obedience after another when you don't understand and you would be tempted to be offended. Do you remember in John 6, fed 5,000, Jesus did? But toward the end, he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they said, this is weird. Who's he? What's he talking about? And they left. There was a 12 left. And he said, are y'all going to be offended too? And Peter said, where else do we have to go? There's no place else to go. So be careful that we're not offended by God and that we embrace, embrace his heart because it's for you, not against you. I had a hard time embracing Father the way my sister did because she and dad had a good relationship. Daddy and I, not so much. I knew he loved me just as I always knew God loved me. But I didn't feel his love through compliments and affirmation. Now God restored that before he died and everything that had hurt me deeply, he ask my forgiveness for. And you say, but my dad died and I didn't have a chance to do that. You can do it now. You can forgive him. Forgive her. Forgive whoever it is. And that opens up the door of heaven that God says, who you forgive, they're forgiven. And Hebrews 11, 40 says the cloud of witnesses are listening. And they are having the redemption of their soul, just like we have the opportunity to redeem our soul now. As we come to him, walk with him, and trust him. Yes, there will continue to be battles, just as this overhead shows. We're in a battleship. But there's the rainbow in the sky. He says, I've got it. I've got it. I've provided what you need for where you're going and what I am doing in your life. And so I want to read to you James 1, 3 through 4, that says, Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped, in are encountered with trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. 
Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith brings out endurance and steadfastness and patience. And let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. Lacking in nothing. That's what I want, don't you? I want to give him his full inheritance while we walk here on earth. I want to be a part of the harvest that he has for us to participate in. Isn't that amazing? That he's given us the opportunity to participate in a harvest of bringing those to himself. And in closing, I want to read to you Isaiah 41 that God gave this message to me some time ago. When I was hurting and not understanding what was going on, God sent this message to me, and it's to you also. Isaiah 41, 10 through 16. Fear not, there is nothing to fear. Let me add except walking out of his presence, except offending him by not trusting him, except offending him by saying, you didn't provide enough for me. I'll just take care of it myself. Starting over, fear not, there's nothing to fear, for I'm with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Behold, all they who are enraged and inflamed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. They who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you but shall not find them. They who war against you shall be as nothing, as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God. Hold your right hand. I am the God who says to you, fear not. I'll help you. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you to be a new, sharp, threshing instrument, which has teeth, you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills like shaft. You shall went to them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the tempest or the whirlwind shall scatter them, and you shall rejoice in the Lord, you shall glory in the Holy One of Israel." So let's glory in him right now and say, if you're ready, I'm willing, I'm willing to trust you when I don't understand, when it doesn't make sense, when it hurts, when it's painful, and it's okay to cry. When you're reading through Joseph's story, when he realized his brother Benjamin was alive and he'd met his brothers, all the pain that was stored up, he went in another room and it said he wept so loud that everybody could hear him. It's okay to hurt. Just let him hold you. Many times when I've hurt, and wanted somebody to hold me, and there wasn't anybody there, God said, I'm in you. Take your arms. Hug yourself this way. And receive my hug. So hug yourself when you're hurting, letting it be his holding you. 
and then look up or stand up, look up and rejoice. So the final walking orders are bring this about by starting thanking him for what's going on. Thanking him when you don't understand. Find something to thank him for. You may have to look deep and you may have to uh, think, thank him for something. Well, at least, Lord, I can get out of bed today. And you said, but I couldn't get out. Okay, thank him that your eyes are open. Well, I'd rather have just checked out. No, thank him by faith that he still has something he wants to do through you. And then get up. Stand up. Look up and thank him. And I can attest it works. Today, the things that I thanked him for, it seems like deeper and deeper and deeper levels of appreciation that I thank him for what he's doing and how beautiful it is. Shall we take the leap of faith today? And let's declare as uh, our battle cry being a battle trumpet. You are a battle trumpet. You're God's weapon to push back the darkness. And let's shout out. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Is everybody for that? Let's go together. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered for your inheritance, Jesus' reward, and the Holy Spirit having his way. I bless each one of you and say I am so glad to walk this way with you. I was looking at all the folks that are in the sanctuary. And I, and this is what I heard in my head. My name is Tiffany Beavers. And I represent the kingdom of my father. I represent the love of Jesus Christ. And I represent the counsel of the Holy Spirit. If nothing else. My name is Jason. My name is Amy. My name is Lois. My name is Chad And this is my purpose because pain has a way of resetting your expectations. Let me repeat that. Pain has a way of resetting your expectations and getting you grounded in what we are here for. I wanted to sleep so bad this morning. I was so tired from fighting off surgery and being sick and my wife was sick all week long. And half the church is sick from the summer crud. It was just the constant wearing down and the beating down of life. Just the the stress and all this and this fight and that fight. And you have to take a step back and remember, I am the inheritance that Jesus died for. I exist for his good pleasure. Remember, probably the most pained man in all of biblical history, Job, he, he could just curse the day he died. He says, why did I even draw breath? And so God answered him. And it wasn't the answer I guarantee Job wanted. He said, because I am God. And I know what is best for you beyond what you could possibly conceive It's easy for us to get offended. It's easier today than it's ever been to be offended. But we are not asking that question. And mom did it so much better than I did in explaining. She, she gave out the, the, the love and the mercy. But she had to, to love in a tough manner to raise three strong young men in Christ. And paid a price for it. That was one of her purposes. We can't afford to be offended. We will take that pain that we receive and we will offer it to God as an act of worship. 
God, I don't understand. God says, sometimes you don't have to. I would just rather you trust me through this. I'd just rather you know that I don't have to think. This is hardcore maybe to some folks. This is quite normal to me. This feels good to me. I God doesn't have a thing to prove to us. Not one thing. Everything was proven on the cross. He chose the most horrible death you could possibly imagine in human history. That sacrifice. I exist for the pleasure of God. And, it won't, and, the, and the hard seasons won't last forever. The pain won't last forever. It's not that God really truly enjoys tormenting us or allowing the enemy to, to try to destroy us. That's not God's heart. I just refuse to believe that about God. But he is aware of the sinful world that we live in and the sinful nature that we carry with us. Because I know who wins in the end. I know God loves us. Right. So let's be those exceptional Christians that say, thank you for the pain. Thank you for the hurt. Thank you for the doubt. Thank you for the misunderstanding, because it's going to make me more like your son. And the more I become like your son, the happier you're going to be, father. That is something I'll invest in the rest of my life. I'll do it. It's worth it. Mom. Mom exceptional message this morning thank you heavenly father when we don't understand this is my response you love us when we don't when we're hurting you hurt with us we trust you when you're silent we will proclaim the truth that we know. that Jesus Christ is the son of God. That he came to earth and died for our sins. Because forgiveness of our, of our sins was our greatest need. And we will walk boldly in truth and in love. In your name. In Jesus mighty name. And all God's mighty people say. Amen. Go and st-